All right, folks, I want to show you um, a couple ways on how we can attach things to this tiny servo motor that we have. Um, I talked about coding the servo motor in a separate video, so now I'm going to talk specifically about working with this physically. Um, one of the nice things about servo motors is that we can set their angle in code uh, very precisely. But the downside is they don't uh, do a full circle. They only have a range. Sometimes it's 0 to 180, um, 0 to 90. These ones happen to be 0 to uh, 120 degrees. Um, a normal DC motor mm, spins just continuously uh, forward or reverse. A stepper motor is another kind of motor that we can tell it to rotate very precisely, but it uh, will do a 360. Um, those are nice to work with for some applications. The trouble with DC motors and stepper motors, though, is that they often require higher current than a microprocessor can provide. So we need to use a, another um, intermediary chip, either a motor controller board or an H-bridge or um, some transistors to uh, get the appropriate power to the motor. The nice thing about servo is that it's low um, power enough that we can run it directly from the microprocessor without any other uh, circuitry components. So, uh, okay, so I'm gonna talk about uh, mounting a number of different things here. First is we might wanna mount this in uh, something. So. Here we go. This is my fake um, interface board that I want to mount the servo on for whatever reason. Uh, and it's just a, a square cut out with two little holes. Um, how did I get to this? Well, I just measured the servo. So I used some calipers to measure um, how long it is and how thick it is. Uh, and that gave me the dimensions of the rectangle. I did plus a little bit to make sure it would fit. And then similarly, I measured the length uh, or the distance between those holes for the screw holes. Now, the, the screws that came with this are um, small. I wanna make the holes even smaller than the screws so that they'll bite in there. You'll see the holes in the servo are actually big so the screw passes through there and bites into the material. Uh, the other thing you want to be mindful of that I neglected um, is how you're going to put this in. So we could mount it like this, which looks really nice. I like that, but there's a problem with that that I'll show you in a second. Or we could go the other way and thread the cabling through and put our servo in like this. But if we've made this square just right, you see now it's too thick to get through there. So that's why <laughs> this one faces smooth. Um, to angle this in, I had to uh, carve that side down just a little bit with the X-Acto, like literally a hair um, to get this to fit in. So I'm gonna put the servo in like this, even though it looked better the other way. Um, let me show you one other thing. Your servo also comes typically with this little bag of goodies, which are different arms and screws and things that are supposed to help you mount to this little nub that it has. Okay, so we've got a kind of a two by this kind of cross and a little one off arm thing, just for um, different applications that you might wanna do. If you're mounting a big circle on something, you might wanna use uh, this one because it has the most support area. If you're just doing something single-sided, this would obviously best be best. And then here's uh, a twofer. Um, 
and they've got all these little holes in them which helps you uh, with mounting things to them. Uh, we've got this little screw that's flat. That screw actually holds the propeller to the motor shaft. These screws are for mounting the servo to your panel. Now, the only reason I'm not mounting this underneath, which is how you would normally mount something panel mount, the screws are longer than the thickness of this material and the servo. So if I, when I screw these through, they're gonna poke out this side, um, which if this is the inside or the underside, that's fine. But if it's the top surface or my UI, I don't want these sharp screws poking out the top. So that's why we're gonna go this way with these. Um, to put these in, I'm just gonna use a tiny screwdriver. They are very small screws. So the heads on them are smaller than a normal uh, screwdriver can fit. So uh, you need a special tiny screwdriver. We have these in the makerspace. And I made my holes about a millimeter. And that's pretty tight for these screws. So I might actually recommend maybe like a millimeter and a half pilot hole. And you could do this with um, a hand drill too, if you wanted. Um, or you can, you know, lay it out and laser cut it either way. Okay. That one kind of went in at an angle. Um, so we've got that mounted to the board. There we go. Now we can put the propeller in. Again, I'm putting the propeller in after mounting it because if I'm using one of the bigger propellers, uh, depending on which way I mount it in, it could get caught on the hole, um, make that harder to do or access my screw holes underneath. This little screw goes in there. You wanna be careful with these plastic screws cause they kind of tap threads as they go and you can strip them out easily. So I'm just gonna do this very gently. Okay, there we go. That'll work. Um, nice. So one other thing I wanted to mention um, when you're putting the propeller on is you've got to uh, think about what the zero state for the servo is. So in code, you might want to set the servo to zero um, position first so that you can align this the way you want it. Because if you've only got that, um, so many degrees of spin, you wanna make sure it's spinning the direction you want and perhaps that that default state is in a position that you want relative to the servo. Because so you can put these propellers on uh, at any angle. So be mindful uh, of how you put the propeller on. Let's see, now I might wanna test this. So I've got a, circuit here just running my back and forth code. I'm just plugging these in. Okay. So let's see what we've got. Great. Nice. So let me turn that off. So then like, but like fine, but now what? Um, lots of things. We can mount whatever we want um, on here. As long as it's light enough. This is a very small servo. It's not gonna be like lifting cinder blocks. Um, 
or anything like that. But I could make this tiny lever arm, you know, much longer with a big rod uh, of some kind if I wanted to do like a dial indicator um, or yeah, like a, like a valve check or something. So I'm going to use some thin wire here to thread through these. I could in theory like screw directly to the propellers, but um, those would be some really tiny screws. I don't know how well that would work. So I'm going to try just putting this on here and twisting around. Again, this would not be great for like a finished uh, product, but for a little prototype where I'm just trying to see if my concept will work. You know, this is great. For a final product, I would want to figure out a screw solution. Okay, so then we can see how that works. Well, <laughs> I can barely hold it. Nice. So that gives me significantly more uh, lever arm than I had before because of the length of that piece. Um, reminds me of like a car speedometer maybe or something like that. So that's uh, one thing I can do with this. Mm. I could also put like a a disc on here if I wanted for whatever reason. Um, so if I could make like a spinny radial thing. Um, to do that, I'm going to mark the center of my circle, again ideally on the laser cutter, um, and then put the arm on here. And I wanted to show you two different ways of doing this, so I'm, and then marking with a fine tip pen or pencil uh, through these holes where I want to drill. Um, and then I can drill the holes, or uh, if I want to be very fancy, you know, I could take a picture of this or scan it or measure it to get that into my laser cut file and, and just laser cut the holes again too. Um, But let's see what I can do here. It would help if I remembered which hole. I'm going to go with the very end, I think. So I can thread through both of them, but that leaves me with the wires kind of sticking out. You know, so I might go over here and twist them together and then snip the excess off. Um, and I've got that kind of staple look on the right. So that's like not, not great. Um, so then the other way is to kind of loop around the arm. So if I make a... Um, staple like this or a loop, then I can put the loop on the arm and pull this tight and then twist these. I could do this on um, the other side too, which would make this look cleaner so I don't have these wires sticking at the top. If you want to get a wire twist like this really tight, um, use a pair of pliers to do the twist because uh, they are a little more dexterous than your fingers usually. I'm just going to tuck these underneath for now.
you can also uh, just hot glue this um, propeller piece onto um, your your material, you know, just uh, just glue it, just glue it on the back there, and that's a way uh, to secure it too. If it, if the thing's light enough and you're not putting in a lot of um, tension on it, so we could do a spinny disc um, for some UI element if we wanted to do that too. Uh, so that's just some real basic ways to start thinking about how you might work with a servo motor um, as part of an interface and how to attach things to it for prototyping.